today on Crazy Carl Projects. I'm working on the Cherokee, trying to fix the uh, the puking transmission. And uh, I have cleaned up the uh, oil slick the best I could. Bunch of K litter, scooped it up, disposed of it properly. But hand under there. It does look like for the time being that the pan gasket is what failed but there is all kinds of junk caked up around the uh the transmission cooling lines and the uh fill tube so i'm gonna have to get under there and scrape and clean and make sure that is the only place this is leaking everything could be leaking but uh then i still have the starter to fix and i have new tires and lugs and studs for these so when I snap these two off taking this wheel off these four off I will have new ones to put on it <laughs> and I've got a uh, wink over it's in the back of the truck and I'll show I'm using a spare same wheels it has the stripe I get those repainted I'll have the stripe at it but uh, what was using spare I'm going to use it to mount first because I could not get tires the same size that are on there. So I had to go up one size. They're the same width. Pretty much the same width. But that's an inch taller. So I'm going to fit it on the spare. And make sure it, it works. Which this spare is A bald. And B was rubber once upon a time. You can see the sidewalls are splitting. But um... This tire, 16 years old. That's what I'm trying to see right now. <laughs> I'm trying to remember when I bought it. I think I got these tires, this tire in 2007. Well, I bought it in 2007, so it's at least that old. It's bald, it's old, so it's like, and this wheel is a lot nicer than the wheel on there. And I'm worried the reason why that front tire has been leaking so bad. I have a feeling that it may be the wheel, not the tire that's leaking because it's bad rusted on the inside. So I'm going to switch out to this wheel. And like I said, the only difference between this wheel and the wheels on it is this little black stripe. Which they charge extra for. <laughs> that's, that's a more expensive wheel because it's white with the black stripe. As opposed to just white. And if you got the one, and they also had uh, American ones, and they were the same wheels, once again, paying red, white, and blue. Those were the most expensive. So, Jeep, 70s, whatever. <laughs> but uh, I'll get this mount, that tire mounted on this wheel, and I'll double check clearances. That has about an inch, two inch lift on it. So it should clear because the tires on it would actually fit without a lift. So I should be fine. We'll see. Um, and I've got the starter to fix still, which is going to be fun because I've got to quit hot wiring it with a screwdriver because it's melting my screwdriver. Harbor Freight screwdriver. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to use it as a chisel, but apparently it will melt. <laughs> <laughs> so um I, I need to figure out something there the switch is bad and i don't know if i want to go through the trouble of replacing the switch because i have to disconnect the battery right now so i have a feeling what i'm going to do is put a starter button on the fender and when i hook the battery in i'll just have the key turned and i'll push the button and that'll run the starter motor and that'll be that's going to be a quick easy one to fix until i find out what's wrong where the short is because I've got to find the short that's running the battery down anyways so when I rip all that stuff out I'll fix the starter <laughs> till then I'm just gonna make a bypass starter what are you working on in this video uh, everything mentioned <laughs> but start with I think this video is probably just going to be the transmission trying to fix the leak in the transmission that way it doesn't puke its guts everywhere Alrighty, I'm actually getting to use my crawler, uh, but as you can see, it is, uh, it may be leaking from 
the transfer case there too, but I'm not sure. I think that's just where it's run back from being tipped up. Because it wasn't really all that wet till I tipped it on the ramps. But you can see the pan is bad and all the goop there. So I want to have fun with that. Let's see if I can set the camera somewhere where you can see stuff without getting nasty. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you can see something. Cross maybe so I can see if it's actually leaking above it or not. <laughs> This used to not be this bad. This was fairly clean two years ago. Maybe it's not the man. It's not that leaking. It may actually be leaking from the main seal between the transfer case and the transmission. But then again, there's. I say that, but it's just horrible everywhere. It's hard to tell. See if I can set you up on the other side and get anything. Hmm. Really? It's locked. There we go. But, uh, you can see how gunky it is there. That's the control unit, and those are the coolant lines, and over there somewhere is the fill tube and you can tell it's it, the gaskets failed outright it's all leaking so yeah fun times what i'm worried about is, if you can see it right in there where the transfer case goes off of it so you see this is full-time four-wheel drive so that actually runs both the front and rear wheels and that's the transmission. There's the power off. So. That's going to be. The good thing is. I don't think that's leaking. Because all I see is red transmission fluid. And it's from up there. So. We'll see. And it's off again. It's recording. But it's, the screen goes off. So let's see if I can get it set up. So it sees something. That I'm working on. You see the engine's all nice and clean though. Yeah, parking brake definitely doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> There's a cable for it. That don't go nowhere no more. My face out from underneath there. Safety glasses. You want safety glasses. Oh, on the plus side, with all this caking on it, it ain't gonna rust. Chunky. The good thing is it actually looks more and more, I get into this more, it looks like it's leaking mostly from the pan. You can see where it's caked on there, but it looks like it may all be from the pan leaking, because there's the, the return, well, let me see it, there's the cooling lines and the control, and while they're soaked, they're... I think it's leaking from the fill tube, which is up above it, there, but I don't know. Huh. I don't know. I'll keep taking stuff apart and take cleaning the goop off of it and see if I can't figure out where it's leaking from. Hopefully it's just the pan leaking, and once I fix that, change that gasket out, I'll take care of it. But, I don't know. Keep working. Look at all that goop. gonna be scraping all kinds of junk off that's what I'm basically gonna be doing is trying to scrape everything clean so I can see what the heck is going on just all this junk and what's bad is this was cleaned and renewed about three years ago 19 it doesn't have 10,000 miles on it so which reminds me I need to change the oil 
not because it's due just because it's been two years on that oil but yeah I've got all this gunk to to get off so uh, lots of this lots of this so all the rust stop that's what that is muddy uh oily mud that's rust stop right undercoating but i gotta clean up around these carefully make sure they're not ah, make sure they're not leaking i need a pair of safety glasses so that's probably going to be it i show until it's all cleaned up because i need safety glasses in both hands and i don't think i can get a good angle anywhere I think I got stuff on my face, so I'm gonna roll out and uh, get back to it. But yep, so uh, if I ever get where I can get out and the car, <laughs> uh, but, <clears throat> okay. But yeah, so. Weight reduction. Aerodynamics. No air dam there. <laughs> Lots of weight reduction. Better drainage. Let me see. Some of the junk I've gotten out. I'm at the point where I'm going to have to get all this stuff up and clean up. That's just the beginning. You can see that uh, I can see some definition of stuff in there. It's not all one big lump. But yeah, this is going to be fun. So far I can tell the pan is leaking, the filler tube is leaking, and I think the sensor is leaking. So this is all kinds of fun. I think everything is leaking. All kinds of fun. Yeah. Plus i got to clean all this junk off of it so I can fix it. Okay. Now I'm going to take simple green after this transmission so I can get it cleaned up because it has started to... Uh, I'll try to show you. But after I got all the caked on mud off, it started to, to bleed transmission fluid and mud. But if you can see, it's kind of bleeding from everything. Speed, the speedo, the speed control, the, the filler neck, everything. So I'm gonna have to get all that cleaned up that other side is not any better. You can see the mud starting to seep down under it. So, and try to figure out and get everything cleaned up and probably dismantled and resealed. And just using Simple Green again. It's not the center one. It's just the bottle I'm using, but it's Simple Green, not a sponsor. And then hot water. So, yeah. Got uh, hot water, I'm still doing the simple green. I'm just trying to clean this up so I can see what's going on. Like I said before, it's seeping mud out of everywhere. So I'm trying to get everything degreased so I can see what's leaking. And so it's actually clean enough that if I have to, I can take it apart and reseal. So how do you think this happened? Oh, I have a feeling water got, I, one thing didn't seal somewhere and water got in it somehow and when it was full and the seal the leak seal worked it uh froze and blew the seals out but i can't like i said i can't tell for sure where it's all leaking from but i think it's leaking here it's leaking the fill and it's leaking from the pan uh, i've shown this part already but this part there and from the pan i'm not sure it may be leaking from this return line too because that's for the transmission cooler <clears throat> to quote ernest hey, hey yeah you should have seen it before i got about 20 pounds well it's, look how much is in the bucket good lord well i have it on you have it on video so i'm going to be editing it i know i know <laughs> but you hadn't been here so give you an update <laughs> I've got, I'm down here, I have to move into the garage. And of course, after all my wonderful cleaning and degreasing, I had to put transmission fluid in it to move it into the garage. 
because of the weather, and now there's transmission fluid from where I filled it. But the good news is, after cleaning it, it looks like the leak is limited to the pan and the fill, and possibly this control valve, which I, I'm not sure on yet. But I can't, I think it's actually leaking at the pan there, not it, because it's not any fluid extra other than what was spilt on it above it, so... Uh, and it hasn't been dripping a whole lot. Now, the transfer case may be leaking a little bit because it's got a few drips too. But there's connections there, so it may actually be driven from the back of the pan and running down there. But I'll tighten these bolts on. Uh, these bolts were... What did I do with that wrench? There's a socket somewhere. I think those were 5 eighths. Well, the ones on the... Uh, thing are on the pan or half inch i believe yeah half inch so the pan bolts are half inch that was five eighths i think or nine sixteenths nine sixteenths i think are these which now i can't find the socket double check it so i don't know where it's gone to right hidden by the light <laughs> uh but and I'll tighten that up a little bit. And I've got fluid coming, actually proper uh, quarter track fluid. I found a place that actually still has it. And I will surface this, put fresh fluid in it. Because right now it's topped off with a concoction that was a mix. And uh, maybe put some uh, leak seal in it. The stuff I was using on the transmission that worked good until it froze and blew out the gaskets. I don't think was the sealant stuff. I think that was water in the transmission. Because that fill spout's not sealed. So it let water in. Because there's a catch spot up there. And it's not that it was submerged. I think it just lit water in as water got thrown up there. Uh, keep going. Next step is to drop that pan. And uh, work on that gasket. And make a mess with the fluid. <laughs> that might be entertaining to watch. I'll set the camera up. Try to set it up in a spot where it shouldn't get wet. I don't know if it's going to actually be shooting much of anything, but we'll try. That song, sung by Davy Jones of the Monkees, he originally didn't like the song. Oh? Yeah, because it said it didn't make any sense. It's a Beatles song. A lot of them don't really make any sense. No, it's, it's a monkey song. Oh, that's right. <sighs> Beatles, a lot of the songs have their own twist in the audience. You just have to understand it. Yep, there goes the fluid on the cardboard. <sighs> Can you hand me a wad of paper towels? Cleaning the windshield, you can actually see how good the interior is. Mm -hmm. I can see why you wanted it for the interior. Yep, it has a good interior and a good drivetrain. Yep. And uh, the filter retaining bolt is also half inch, just like the pan. <clears throat> Gasket probably need that filter, which was a new filter, but I'm going to replace it anyways because, yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing concerning in the pan, which is good. Transmission looks to be in good shape, just leaking. Transmission looks good. There's not really any metal shavings or anything in it. Those little bright spots are mud I knocked off trying to pull the pan out. So that was me just reaching under. But it's a GMC transmission. But yeah, it, it's just got... Yeah, it's good. So I'm not worried about the transmission itself. I think the discolor, the weird color stuff on the bottom that's really thick, it's not metal or anything. I think that's the gasket seal I put in it, the the seal repair product. AT205? Yeah. 
think that's what's in the bottom of it because it's not real it's not metallic so but I'll clean this out good clean up the edges good put the gasket let's verify that I've got the right gasket we haven't done an on-screen verification in a long time there's one kit available for every engine they used in the 80s so it's like okay it's got to be this one or it's not going to fit or 70s I should say this time period there's the filter which it looks similar to what came out and there's the gasket which I'm going to use it's the gasket along with the gasket and Honda Bond I might use Honda Bond. Don't don't test me. <laughs> and JB Weld it. Yeah, it looks like the right gasket. I'm not gonna lay it down like I don't want to get dirty fluid on it. But yeah, I think it's a good gasket. <clears throat> JB Weld and Honda Bond it. Do both. Never service that again. <laughs> but I'll probably just use the red is the gasket. High temp, even though I don't need high temp on this, I like the high temp stuff. I've not had problems with it not doing its job. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all there is to do is to clean this out and then check the, get back under there and check for leaks elsewhere and try to get, figure out how I change the O-ring out on the field nozzle. Cause I know it's leaking. All right. Oh, bring it back over here. Zoom in and then zoom out on the other thing. High dramatic GM, branch of division of GMC transmission. That's nice. The fan has it. Bell says anything. But I am going to sand lightly. There's some rust here on the edge. The inside is good, but this outer edge is kind of rough. I'm going to sand it lightly with some very fine grit sandpaper to try to smooth it out so maybe it'll make a better seal. Because that may be part of why, because only half the seal was sealing. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of that, and it'll take a few minutes. And then I'll clean up and get under there and try to replace o rings and see where else it's leaking. And uh, hopefully have it back together by the end of the day. All right. Okay, I've got it. the rust sanded off in a fairly good smooth surface. I use uh, 400 grits what I ended up using because it's what I had. Uh, but you want to use fine grit. You don't do this unless you have rust like I did where it's pushing up Because you want this to be a good surface a lot of times if you're cleaning gasket off what you'd use is uh, scotch Bright, you know soft scrub pad Not the stuff with the soap on it But uh, just to get the gasket material off, but I was actually removing surface rust so I can have a flat surface to go to and I am going to use High Tent Red JB Weld. This isn't the brand I normally use, but we have it, so I'm going to use it. But it also works as a bind. I'm using the new gasket and that. I'm going to add a little bit to the bottom and a little bit to the top so that it'll seal the new gasket to this. And I'll follow the instructions on that to do it. And... I've just had good luck with a good con with the combo I've done on oil pads before and transmission pads before, and it solved the problem of the pan possibly not being completely level anymore and rust pockets and that kind of stuff. It kind of seals all that in, but you got to make sure you get the rust cleaned out, and I did that, and then make sure you clean it good. You don't want any dust in this, so you clean it out really good. And it's about ready to go. I got to get back under, clean up, figure out how I get the fill tube out so I can change those O-rings. And I'm going to change the O-rings and then probably put some of this stuff along the top of it. So when it pushes in, it'll seal there too. Because mm, it's not wanting to seal up. From what I can tell, I think those are going to be the... This is what the freeze blew out. Okay, I don't see where it's any other problem for fluids coming out. And it looks like the only, everything else was wet from when I had to put transmission fluid in it and I spilt some. 
looks to be all this there because there was no buildup. It was just the coating from where I spilt when I was filling it up. Question for you. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be putting a thin bead on and then putting the gasket on top of that? Or are you putting the thin bead on the transmission block and then putting the gasket on top of that? Which way are you doing that? Yes. So you're putting a thin bead on this. Right. And then you set the gasket and you put a thin bead on the transmission as well. And try to be careful, uh, move it towards, you have this ridge on this one, but I always try to set it towards the outside of the center on these so you don't have extra material on the inside because it's tough. It's normally not going to break off and you got to wait the 24 hours before you put fluid in it so you let it fully cure. So it's going to sit in here with no transmission fluid for a day at least uh, an hour you put it on you hand tighten it up and then you let it sit for an hour then you finish tightening it down to your torque specs whatever they are if you know them and uh, then let it cure for at least 24 hours I normally try to wait longer than that if I can and then you put your fluid in it and you can run it and I've had good luck in the past, generally on old Jeeps. Because it's normally old Jeeps I'm doing this with, or old Chevy, other than an old Chevy one time. So, and that should take care of it all. I said the biggest thing, I'm going to clean this out again. But you want to make sure you don't leave any materials in it. And I'm changing out the new filter because this thing had the transmission serviced when the engine was rebuilt. That engine doesn't have, probably doesn't have 2,000 miles on it. So there's not 2,000 miles on this, but I said the, for some reason, the fill tube I don't think ever sealed after the transmission was cleaned up and serviced when the engine was worked on. And then water, I'm thinking water got in around the fill tube. And when it froze and it was actually full fluid, because the uh, sealant stuff I put in there actually sealed the leak. The frozen water blew it all out. Let's go. Alrighty. Give you a shot of what it looks like under here right now. Mm. Let the pan off. And the filter off. Filters in the pan. All fluid. Still dripping. I gotta wipe it off. Let's get the light in front of the camera instead of behind the camera so you can actually see. But everything looks nice and clean. Right there, see where the fill tube comes in. If I can get it, there we go. You see the fill tube and the dipstick. And I've got to figure out how it's connected so I can lift it up and out and change the O-rings in it. Because the O-rings is what's not working. And I'm gonna double check. I think the gasket was actually leaking right here bad because there is a there was a bunch of rust in that corner so i don't think that made a good seal and i'm hoping that's what's leaking not what's bolted above it but i may remove that to check because i think it's just the one bolt holding it and maybe put some extra seal on it too the main thing is just clean it up i'll clean everything up take a, a straight razor and clean that smooth because it doesn't have any rust on it like the pan did and then get it all put back together. I've got uh, the pan off, as you can see. And the filler, I did, uh, I'll turn this light off, wherever the button is. Make it dark. And then turn this light on. And as you can see, there's no light emitting around that fill tube at all. There's nothing. There's from the hole there, but not from the fill tube. So, and it's, the removal point is way up there on top of the transmission. For, I think actually into the engine block. And I cannot get to it. So, the fact that it doesn't look bad, I'm going to clean it up. And I'm going to put some uh, Instagasca on the outside of it. But this, I'm going to remove... Take that bolt off and see if that's seated good because that's really wet. So I think this may be where the leak was. Either that or there's 
I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a little gouge right there. And it's possible that's going to be where it came out too, because the rubber gasket didn't seal properly, and the gouge there in the corner. And I got steel wool, no, you know, just clean, plain steel wool, no soap or anything in it to clean that off and try to get any old gasket material off. And then I will, uh, put an Insta gasket, Insta gasket, reseal it, and take that off. And next up, we take that off and take that bolt off, clean it around, and see if it is leaking there. I was right. It was an O-ring, but it wasn't a filling echo ring. This goes to the vacuum solenoid right next to the, uh, uh, mm -hmm. vacuum module. And it's too big. It does not fit. So it wasn't sealing anything. So it did not make a seal. So that's where the fluid's been coming out of is the vacuum solenoid for the shifter, which is the device I just showed a minute ago. And it's got a, it's held on with a C-clamp held by that bolt next to it. But it's kind of a C-clamp type thing that clicks in there and it pushes it tight. And this O-ring was filthy and obviously not making a seal. Luckily it didn't let anything into the transmission, but that's worthless. And I'm currently cleaning it out with a Q-tip and I'm going to try to find a proper O-ring. And then put some uh, Insta gasket on the end of that to help double the seal. You look like a middle school shop teacher. I know, but these do a better job of keeping <laughs> stuff from getting in my eyes. I've run into is the original O-ring that was used when they did the overhaul on it isn't fat enough to seal up the gap in there on that tube on this right here and i've gone through all the o-rings i have and i can't find anything thicker than that that's not going to be too big or too small the closest i've come is that one which is a size smaller what i may end up having to do is stretch the small one over this and then place the big one behind it so that the two can press together and I'll put Insta gasket, a bunch of Insta gasket over here on the end so it can finish sealing. Um, I'm going to try to go to the parts store and see if I can't get a thicker one of these O-rings. But if I can't, that's the only other solution I've come up with because it is what was leaking because that O-ring makes no kind of seal whatsoever it's way too big on the inside to make a seal so it's just there okay i have to start the camera a little early because i can't do it once i get down but uh show you what i'm doing we got some new o-rings so i'm gonna do have wider ones What I'm going to do, is, as you can see, I've started loading, yeah, if I can get it in the right spot and get it to focus. Come on, focus there. But you can see, maybe, that I'm putting an O-ring on the inside. It's a tight fit. I'm going to push it up good and tight so it has an extra seal on that since I can't get that out. And I am going to put some gasket on the outside on the top. Which I can't get an angle of so you can see it. This thing is a problem. We're still trying to get. There's a flashlight. There it is. A gasket that'll fit in that real good. So it seals good. So to solve that leak problem. And uh, it just goes between the outer and the inner. And there's an inner see if I can pull it out for you and you can see anything <clears throat> but it ah. but it slides out like that and you can see it has an inner piece that fits in and that's not the problem the outer has a o-ring that's supposed to seal and it wasn't sealing so that's where the original leak was coming from then the old gasket just, and then the the pan failed, but that was the original leak. But I'm going to do that just as an extra protection on the. Uh, it's going to be pushed all the way up and pushed in there. I may have to get a thinner O-ring 
because that was not wanting to clear. So I should have a thinner one somewhere. That one's not going to clear, but I'll put a thinner one up there and just press it up so that it's got a, a good extra seal on the inside for back pressure just in case. Okay. I have uh, gotten the new O-ring set in there, which is if it'll focus. And now I'm going to put this back in and hopefully it'll seal. And then while it's still sticking out a little bit, I'll use a little instant gasket around the edge to just give it a uh, backup double seal. Alrighty, I've got the original O ring back in because the new ones didn't work. They were too thick so it wouldn't go in. It would not, there was no way to push it in. So I put a bit of insta gasket, high temp insta gasket around the outside where it's going to seal against the metal. And uh, now I just push it in like so. And then it will, uh, I'll put the bracket back on and seal it into the transmission. I'm going to try to show you how this bracket works to hold this in. It, he just slides over that and it'll, I don't know if you can see anything because of the darkness and my hand's in the way. There's always a drive shaft in the way. It's got a little thing it hooks into up here on the top. And then that pulls it into the right position. And then it bolts right there. And that'll hold it in place. And it puts it in the right position and in the right angle. And that's really all there is to it. And the little key part goes on top because it catches. Just slide it. Put it in, slide it back, and you'll feel it catch over the little hook for it. And then you pull it back down, and it lines it up so it's in the right position and tight. Now, since I'm doing this Insta gasket is more of a gasket seal than a gasket itself, I'm not putting it on near as thick as you would if you were making a gasket with it. And you will see in a moment, I've done the same thing on the transmission already. But it was, it's just so hard to film with me laying under there. I'm not about to lay in transmission fluid while he's doing that. So. I have a line. But I'll show you, it's doing the same thing, just kind of a thin bead all the way around. And then I will spread it out with my finger. To uh, make a salt, and I split the tube. Here, you can just come out there while I'm fixing you. There we go. Now I can bend you over. Don't worry, it'll form an insta gasket. <laughs> but since you use, when you use it as glue, you don't put it on there as thick. Fancy sideways shot for the win. Don't get this confused with your birthday cake icing. That would not be good. Although you could get some nice lettering out of it. Still would not be good. Permanent lettering. Especially when you put it in the oven. Well, it is, you know, it's good to 500 degrees. 550, 600 degrees, something like that. And then you uh, do this and spread it out. Get it around the bolt holes, being careful not to get it inside. And if you get anything on the inside, just wipe it off. But you want it a little thicker on the outside than the inside. Because you don't really want it to uh, go back into the pan. And like I said, you're using it more as a glue sealant than you are uh, steel. So it's just a little different method than what you do when you're actually doing it as making a gasket. But it should greatly improve the sealing ability of the rubber gasket that came in the kit. And all the way around the bolt holes. Also going to make removing the transmission pan a pain. Not really. 
it sticks nope. a little better so you might have to pry it a little bit but normally i've never really had it really make it that much worse now see where i got it on the inside there i gotta pick that up so paper towel because you do not want it in the pan itself just take a towel clean it up make a happy tree remember mistakes make happy trees i read that somewhere Make a happy little tree. Yep, but there you go. And since that's going to be a little thinner, I'll just deal where I got a little bit gloppier over here and put it back. There we go. This is where you use those finger painting skills you got in, in elementary school. Since I am the kid that always came up with more, came home with more paint on my shirt than on my painting, this might not be a good idea for me. See, you were the kid they bought the Hawaiian style multicolor slosh shirts because uh, you couldn't tell when you got paint on it. Yes. Your rebellion on that was your goth move? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go goth. Well, not completely. Well, the biggest pressing thing with this is you only got about an hour to 45 minutes to work with it. So once you've committed, you've committed.